I was at a seminar last uh, last week, last Wednesday, Thursday in York, and it was Dr. Susan Friedman that was the presenter of the seminar. Two days. Um, if you don't look, know who Dr. Friedman is, have a look at our website. It's behaviourworks.org. Uh, a lot of really, really, really useful information on there, and uh, there's lots of free downloads and just things to think get us thinking in different ways. One of the key ideas that she brought up was not so much that the, 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 the animal or the dog is doing something because they feel a certain way and this is for the work that I do it's mainly dogs that are kind of fearful uh, of other dogs or of people so it's not so much that the dog acts a certain way because he's fearful the dog acts a certain way and is fearful in relation to certain things that are going on in the environment now I had a, an understanding of this a little bit up until uh, last week but it's just kind of opened um, changed the way I think a little bit which um, and hopefully I've seen the benefits of that in the last week's in some of the training sessions I've been doing so to give you an example of that see so we got a dog that lunges and barks at other dogs it lunges and barks at other dogs and rather than saying the dog lunges and barks at other dogs because he is frightened because of lack of socialization or because of a traumatic experience if we start thinking in terms of the dog lunges and barks and is frightened because the other dog is too close and even break that down further, the dog lunges and barks and is frightened because the other dog is within 20 feet of the dog say. Okay. So by changing this, what we can now do is if we change the dog being at 20 feet away and we control that part of it, the dog is now doing something else and feeling something else. So the dog is now not lunging and barking because the other dog is 20 feet away. And the dog might have mild apprehension, which we can't measure, unfortunately, unless we're going to take swab samples for cortisol levels at that distance. So instead of it being frightened, it's mildly apprehensive. So we've now got the dog doing something else because the, dog, the other dog is 20 feet or more away, and the dog hopefully feeling something else. And we can now, using proper classical conditioning and proper positive reinforcement can now reinforce the dog for what he's doing because he's now doing something that we like which is not lunging and barking so we're now training the dog to look calmly at another dog because we want to train the animal to do something rather than not to do something and through classical conditioning with the food that we're using the dog now starts making positive associations with the presence of another dog so it's just a little, just a little bit of a tweak um, in, in looking at things. So rather than thinking the dog acts the way because he feels a certain way, let's just start thinking about the dog acts a certain way and feels a certain way because of something that's going on in the environment. And if we can change what that thing is, the antecedent to the behaviour, we can then change what the dog is doing. And we can change what the dog's doing. We can now train other things. So. Uh, I've got loads and loads more to talk about from the stuff that I, I learned at, with Dr. Friedman last week, which I'll, when I get time, I'll uh, I'll try and get it on video and share it with you. Any comments about this, same again, just stick them in the, in the field below, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. It won't be too long before I do my next video, but I'll do it when I get the chance. All right, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you again.